the beauty that the Lord does that, he goes back to the garden and once again proclaims, this is my body given for you without shame. And that I'm completely naked without shame before you. Crucified, beaten, full of sin. I, I, he takes on our affirmities, right? This is my body for you, right? And, and then eventually we get the freedom to do that as well. I'm not, I'm not gonna be ashamed of my sin anymore. I'm not gonna be ashamed of my body. I'm not gonna hate my body. I'm not gonna hate my sin. I'm not gonna hate those things. But because Jesus says it first on the cross and eventually receives the gift of that in his resurrection, that I can say, yeah, this is my body given for you, Lord. And some guys are afraid to pray that, like, because I don't, I, I, I don't, would never wanna pray that. But eventually over time, just through like the gift of gentleness and Jesus's tenderness with them, they, they begin to make that prayer their own. Lord, here's my body. I give it to you. Which is, which is beautiful. Like a refrain that he wants to keep allowing us to find freedom. And I don't want to be ashamed of my body. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey, I'm Father PC. Yo, everybody. <laughs> Father Innocent here. And I'd like to introduce my twin brother. I'm just going to <laughs> I'm just gonna let this big, long pause. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Hi, everyone. My name is Father, Father Angelus. <laughs> How are you feeling? Okay. Everyone's all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm really yeah. punchy at this one. Uh, it's Holy Week. Mm. Just Well, sort of. <laughs> yeah, it's not Holy Week. We're recording this. It was um, your birthday not too long ago. And are tomorrow. You, is tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow, today, when is it? Father, yeah. my birthday is, it, this is on all April birthday mm -hmm. cast. Yeah. April 1st for me. April 6th April for 6th me. for Angelus. Father Angelus, when's yours? April, <laughs> April 6th, 7th, 1985. For us. Two minutes older than. April 29th, the end. How does it feel to have a birthday that's like movable within the liturgical calendar? Yeah, I've, I mean, we were born on Holy Saturday. I mean. And we've had birthdays on Holy Friday, Holy Friday, Good Friday. Just that it lands on different days of the liturgy. Yeah. Meaning like, yeah, sometimes it's like in Lent, sometimes it's during Easter weeks or like whatever, Holy Week. Yeah, it's right. I mean, we were born on Holy Saturday and I mm -hmm. remember birthdays. You remember that? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. But it's just interesting because it's always kind of around this time. Yeah. It's usually before. It's, it hasn't been a big factor in my life. Yeah. I mean, like, I guess we're more sensitive to it as friars because growing up, I was never excited that my birthday is an Easter season. Yeah. I was just excited about the gifts. What's yes. up? Yes. Question. <laughs> Question. If this is Wednesday, April 5th, our birthday is on Holy, on Holy Thursday. I know. Mm, priest, priest day. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> we're recording when this is coming out. It's Father Malky's birthday. Shout out, shout out, Father Matt. Can I go back to the fact that I <laughs> <laughs> celebrate on birthdays on Holy Thursday? Yes. Then you're a priest. That's great. That's you, wonderful. You actually gonna we're gonna celebrate it together? You're gonna be there? I'm always there. Always. Bro. You're not gonna be in Lords? <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah, gonna be you, in Lords. You used to be in Lords. That used to be your thing. I don't yeah. Holy Thursday. What you used to go? I always used to it just felt like Friday. you were gone forever. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um <clears throat> <clears throat> back to this is again this is the time we talk about fun liturgy stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> oh Am I, we've had to have talked about that before on this podcast well we're going to talk about it again <laughs> <laughs> what fun liturgy in, thing in Paul, on so in seminary again the friars are in charge of the liturgy and there was one historic Easter vigil Easter vigil mm. were you there for that yeah I mean there's been a lot of funny stuff that happened I was in charge Easter of the liturgy vigil. I was telling you what to do <laughs> There's a Not lot of one. funny stuff. Not this one. So it's your fault. And uh, Father PT, why don't you, why don't you take <clears throat> us Give us back. a first-hand account. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if we do this correctly or not as a community because the church asks for one thing. And we've kind of had a tradition of doing it another way. So at the Easter Vigil, you we keep the lights off in the church. And so if you're familiar with the Easter Vigil, you walk into the church with the candles um, that are lit from the fire that's blessed outside that lights the Easter right. candle, right? And so we kind of have that. And then uh, eventually... And I'll, I'll say, like, uh, like technically, I think when the Easter candle comes in, yeah. all the lights are supposed to go on. They're supposed to the go light on. of Christ. Yeah. But we've we've always had the, kind of this, and I this tradition lot, as a, a lot community of do that, yeah. that we just keep the church dark until the Gloria, right? And then like this is a big moment of... So like you go through the readings, it's in darkness, and then eventually the glory comes on, the church bell rings, and it's kind of like the big reveal of the church, if you will, where like flowers. the things, yeah, the flowers and the, um, what do you call it? The candle labra and the candle things are polished. It's just nice. And then this is the point in time in our liturgy when the altar service. service go through and they light the candles. 
And so I don't know what like setting of the Gloria we do, if it's like the Mesa Simplex or like, but whatever. But usually it's it's like it's done up well with the organ. And I don't know if there's trumpets at this point, but um, so my job at this at this particular liturgy this year um, was to light the candles. And so there's there's two steps, if you will, of candles. There's one that are like maybe ground level, not ground <coughs> level, but like maybe f- five or six feet off the ground. But then there's other ones that are on this like recessed ledge. High. And they're high. High. Yeah. Probably like 20 feet up there. They're not that high. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, I have like that, that candlestick with like the wick that comes out, you know, that you're able to like get to high places. And so the thing is there are six of them. And you can't really see from the angle where you stand when you light it if the yeah, if the candle is actually lit. And so my experience is I come out one door and I light one candle. And so I look to my right, there's another door that, that leads to the sacristy where all the other brothers are <clears throat> are kind of gathering around, like watching the just ha- this happen. So like it's the show within the show. Um, and so I light one candle and I'm staying there too long. And the brother's like, hey, next candle. And so I get to the next one. And while this is going on, everybody's kind of watching this too now because the glory is being being sung. And so all the other candles get lit. And so there's this lowly myself, singular person out there just trying to light the third candle. And now I could hear the Gloria. It's getting towards the end. Winding down, bro. Sweat starts coming down. <laughs> I'm on the third, fourth candle, fifth candle. <laughs> and like now I'm getting close to the guys. Like, yeah, you got this, you got this. So like I'm feeling encouraged. And then, ah, man, I'm at the fifth candle. And I look, Father <laughs> Father Xavier was the liturgy uh, guy at this point. Oh, can I just lie? He goes, no. He shakes his head. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he calls me out the game, if you will. Like he puts me on the bench. You're done. Bro. I was like, no. And so there's just five candles lit. And it's like kind of like everybody's watching this. And so they, they just know. I don't know if we lit it at all during that liturgy. I'm not sure. I don't think so. But uh, but it's just like a sense of accomplishment or sense of defeat actually at that point where it's like, I just I couldn't do it. Five yeah. out of six. It's bro, usually just, nice and good. I mean, yeah, but, you just couldn't do it, bro. But you want six out of six. And so you just. We talk, we talk about that every year. Yeah, I know. It's so like, so it's, hey, remember that time when you didn't light all the candles? <laughs> but like, a lot oh. happened. But it was yeah. it was funny because like mm-hmm. like uh, like Father Andrew was like because you're the whole everybody in the sanctuary was like totally turned, yeah. just watching you. Yeah, and we all know that glory is coming to an end. It's like this like it's like the excitement of what's mm-hmm. gonna happen. Father Andrew's watching you. Mm-hmm. Bishop Bob who was in the cell at the time. Everyone's just like oh, yeah. staring. And then you didn't you just didn't do you it. Couldn't get it. Yeah, it's okay. I didn't. Sorry, right, bro. I've brought it to spiritual direction. I, I've worked. I walked, walked with, through it. <laughs> yeah. with Jesus through really this, beautiful. and so um, that wasn't the only thing. That was that when we thought during the reading for uh, Abraham, we thought there was like controversy about whether or not the reader said, and then Abraham saddled his monkey. <laughs> <laughs> And there's like a lot of people throughout the church in different areas who are like, no, he definitely, instead of saddled, saddled his donkey. There's mm-hmm. like, no, he definitely said monkey. Yeah. And the reader's like, no, I didn't. Mm-hmm. That's Sad. when, and then <laughs> Abba Chesco almost blew out the, he wanted to blow out the Easter <laughs> yeah. candle. Because there's like time, like you're blowing out candles. Should yeah. I blow that one? No, bro. That's like, no, that's the whole point. <laughs> Don't that's blow the out the Easter point. candle. Don't blow out the Easter candle. There's the, the, oh, the wardrobe change. There was, yeah. there was a lot. It was a lot going on there. But it's one of my favorites. It's memorable mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, and now we've changed the way they do it. Yeah. They realize it's not, you know, it's not fair to expect. So and what do they do? They have probably two guys. They also have oil lamps. Mm-hmm. They're oil lamps. Because now, so back then there were candles, like wax candles. Okay. And so now they actually have the, uh, yeah, the, the fillable, like refillable oil yeah. things. And so that those are easier, easier to light. And so it's just not how it used to be before, you know. Yeah, it's very funny, yeah. man. It's just helpful. It's helpful for me as a priest just to learn from that mistake and, I'm comfortable in my uncomfortability, <laughs> you know. Hey, that's if you're gonna be a, a priest in front of people, you're gonna do some stuff. Oh yeah, you're gonna have to get used to that. Yesterday, I was anyway. My mind was a different place. So this is the mystery of faith. We normally say, or the mystery of faith. <laughs> this is the mystery of death. <laughs> like <laughs> Wait, all the things I said, like I don't know where I was because I was looking, like I was trying to look ahead to see which of the three different options of the memorial acclamations to do. And so I just must have read death instead of anyway. And I was like, I mean life <laughs> or faith. <Yeah. laughs> so you, sometimes you say things you're not supposed to say. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a, awesome. in, in the desert, I forgot about this. I was the, um, <coughs> almost the martyr of the sign of peace. Yeah. There, you know, there's a couple of mornings that are super cold. And for whatever reason, two mornings, I don't think we talked about this, oh, man, but two mornings struggled. I basically was passing out. One, it was like like pretty serious thing. But um. Uh, so I was like, like confused and trying to get through it. And, um, <laughs> we don't do the sign of peace at all in the desert. And like, I like had to like go down to take a, 
to like kneel to like let head like the blood get to my head or whatever so i didn't it was think. like t- like he yeah, was yeah it was like a real thing. pass out yeah it was a real thing but uh when i was going down i was like let us offer each other a sign of peace because <laughs> i was like disoriented but i was like so i i started i i knew something was drastically wrong <laughs> when paul mark paul mark Marie doesn't like to touch people <laughs> when he wants to give a sign of peace yeah. you're like whoa he's off so i was like yeah. just oh, in the desert is... we never do that no we never do it and we never, right. we really do it here like, yeah, yeah, on yeah, Sundays. Yeah. and so it's funny <laughs> when you did that oh, but like, he he's also kind of passing out at the same time i'm like right. This suddenly got real intense. Yeah. <laughs> Let us, it's got real Let real us quick. offer each other this sign. Sorry, bro. I'm just faithful to sign a priest or sign a peace. <laughs> Are you faithful to it? I mean, it, I mean, faithful to it in that I do what the church mm-hmm. envisions. I mean, I on Sundays to. I do it. I I just, we do what the church envisions. Mm-hmm. We try. I mean, we, yes, we do. <clears throat> That's all I desire. We definitely do. There's one brother in particular I know at my house doesn't appreciate it. So like on Sundays, I look specifically at him. <laughs> I said, let us now offer each other a <laughs> sign of peace. <laughs> He'll like shake his head. It's great. That's a really beautiful use of your authority. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> in Persona Christi. It's really beautiful. I'm so edified by you. <laughs> Why don't you go take a D, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go take it. <laughs> All right, Frankie. All right. Still <laughs> Frankie. 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 <laughs> Frankenstein still going strong. We haven't come up with Father Innocent yet. We gotta, no, we gotta he's just... He's all solitude. Let's, yeah, let's, all let's, let's, solitude. Let's, let's leave him on solitude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get closing my eyes over here and I'm getting cues of falling asleep. I'm actually being moved. I'm actually praying. The brothers are talking. I'm in it. And Father I, PT thinks I'm sleeping. I'm sorry. I just know myself. If my eyes are closed <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so anyway. I mean, I wasn't being moved by anything we said this episode <laughs> so far. My initial thought was that this the Holy Week episode would have a particular psalm and somber feel <laughs> you tell us that now well you're i mean like, it's not we're not actually in guy, holy week the guy bringing this up real relax um so it's holy week <laughs> <laughs> or this episode will be coming out in holy week and um there's two things that we're going to try and look at and i think we can time together um but in, in particular so last uh, on s- last last week, we did talk about um, it was Palm Sunday, and there's a reality too. Like, okay, we know how the story goes, you know, and so there is a, there is a point. Of like, in, with on Palm Sunday, we read the Passion account, so we we've, we've kind of gone through in, in some ways. Like, we've gone through this whole the Passion of of, of our Lord, um, but we're gonna kind of go and 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 last week I hoped last week that we kind of focus more on sort of what Jesus was doing, the, the movement, particularly as he enters Jerusalem with the emphasis on authority. And I think here we just kind of like, I think in some ways are, are coming to a close with, with some of these, these, these journeys of, of, of the self emptying, the, the stripping, the, the kind of removing these ways in which we clothe ourselves to be clothed with what uh, the fullness of Jesus. Right. And um, what's going to be fitting is this, like this, this scene of, of, um, of the clothing, like where at first, like if you will, like the advent, the the creation of it, or the first, like it comes on the scene. I don't know. I'm missing my word at this point, but it's it's in the garden. So right, we go Adam and Eve, right? So Adam and Eve sin before before the fall. They're they're naked without shame, and then they sin, they hide in shame, and then Jesus or the and then God, who's uh, God, make, like makes clothes for them uh, to cover them. And so there's like this first thing, like, like this kind of this, this clothing happens from God. So he closed them. Um, but, it, but, rig- but it, like it, originally it wasn't meant to be. So it's, it, there's a certain like, act of God's providence and care and mercy in, in doing this. Now, now we're going back to the garden, right? And so it's, it's going to be the garden of Gethsemane. Um, and also I do think that, um, right. Like there's this, ever like a lot of spiritual authors talk about how like, uh, the wood of the cross is this new tree of life. So we'll extend this this garden imagery as well to to Golgotha and consider this all kind of part of the garden. And um, <clears throat> and so this is again like I think this um, this movement of Jesus, this invitation of of going back to the garden of of this kind of complete um, going back to as it was in the beginning. This part of this redemption and saving us of um, now he's going to this place where where sin first happened or like proverbial he's going to this place where, where sin first happened um and and his his response right is going to be this total self emptying total surrender to the father putting on our own sinfulness <clears throat> um ultimately 
being totally stripped naked again at, at the cross uh, and all of this to, to save us. Um, so, and the idea, <clears throat> the idea, which is weird just because of like, it, it just is weird, but it, but it, like just because of like where we are as humanity, it's just this, it's not that weird, but it, it's the phrase, I think, I think it's from, is it is it from Genesis or is it from JP 2s theology of the body? This idea of being naked without shame. It's from Genesis. Mm -hmm. It's from Genesis. They were naked yeah, without shame. Were. That's actually <laughs> like I mean, so ladder and four it's, wasn't it's, a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> I like we were talking about Rerum Navarum last mm -hmm. week. It's like let's not talk about too many specifics about who wrote it, <laughs> yeah. what the other document was. <laughs> yeah. Let's just use what we got. All right. Um, <coughs> So there's this idea of like being naked without shame. And I think that's like part of um, maybe what I want to look at is this this kind of new invitation, um, right? Because we, we're talking about like being like stripped of all of these things <clears throat> and and to be uh, to be naked without shame, to be stripped of these things, um, but to be clothed with like the dignity of, of, of his providence and, and our identity. Um, and so this idea of naked without shame, I, I think it's like, it's being it's like being totally poor um uh and totally <clears throat> seen um totally vulnerable totally dependent but to experience all of these things without shame um, to experience all of these things without shame um to be totally empty of like what jesus becomes like totally empty of consolation totally empty of like uh before like death even temporal hope um and jesus but jesus like on the cross like he goes there and he's like he, in a certain sense, he's like, he enters to the shame of the nakedness of the crucified criminal so that we may be um, like sort like naked without shame. Again, this idea of just being totally seen, totally vulnerable, totally loved, totally dependent <clears throat> on mercy, uh, totally saved, totally weak, all this sort of stuff, um, but not letting that define us, um, but to be clothed with, again, like our, our, our dignity and identity as sons and daughters. And so um, the next thing I'm going to do is fair, <coughs> share a, a Father Jacques Philippe quote, which uh, is going to kind of be the, the main sort of focus of the episode going forward. But before I, I introduce that, we kind of go down that road. Would you guys like to, to comment at all? Yeah, I mean, I think um, just to maybe emphasize, like you did, Father Mark Mary, that, I mean, we're, we're just in good company with like real saints and spiritual writers who speak about this i mean the garden connection um and it also they they also kind of just just wonderfully just meditate on that jesus like in his passion and we it's the way of the cross right it's um he stripped of his clothing right so there is just a real sense that this like for for i think the catholic lens and the catholic like biblical worldview <laughs> that this is going to move us to be like, whoa, like this is something now we're, we're, we're back in the garden where man, what man was, you know, like, yeah, man was naked. He's been stripped of everything, but, but Jesus comes and the redeeming quality of Jesus is that he doesn't choose to clothe himself now, but he again allows the father to clothe him, right? He's not going to grasp at anything else the world has to offer. Um, he's not going to grasp at like the fruit or, or I kind of, that's the kind of the, Jesus is, is just like the, the, the healing medicine to everything that Adam, you know, is tempted to do and, and ultimately like grasp, you know? So Jesus is stripped and now he has, he, he is the, the perfect example of, of entering into the garden and letting the father just letting the father be the one to clothe him. Right. And, mm. and I think, I mean, I, I, I would, uh, I think it's definitely worth quoting. We, I think we've probably done it before the, the Mary Caucus, um, meditation on the agony in the garden. It's just, it's just wonderful. But he, t he, he, again, is going to talk about this, that in the garden and, and, um, and this whole passion journey, Jesus only knows one, one prayer. And that's the, his, the, the name of his, his Abba. Abba, like that's, that's, that's his, mm that's that's all he has he's been stripped of everything and he he will say abba you know let this cup pass from me but not not my will but your will be done right and so he refuses to clothe himself and all he has is his abba and and 
and he and and the the father is the only one that can come and and clothe him with new life and clothe him with victory and so he waits and he is the, again the perfect example so i just think it's there's something just so powerful yeah. with everything we've been talking about and jesus jesus has t- his come full circle full story he's he's back in the garden and he redeems it perfectly by by being stripped of everything and and, and give and being being fully vulnerable uh, before his father who's the only one that can raise him to life yeah the um i think it's beautiful right once again so the man and woman stood there uh naked without shame before the lord and there's no reason for them to hide there's no reason for anything um in particular in prayer like we can do that right just just bear our hearts and not try to hide anything as we've been speaking about the past couple of weeks and just to literally bear it all before the lord um because he comes in search for us. And so like, right, a little bit after they they eat the, the fruit and then God comes down to walk with them in the cool of the day. And then um, he asks, where are you? Uh, we hid, why? Because you're naked, who told you? Uh, and whatever, and so they go through like the whole unfolding of that part of the story. But the thing I think is, is true is just that, and this is a little bit from the catechism here, but just that God is constantly in search of man. You know, like, and so it's it's interesting even too that God Himself comes down to the garden to talk to Adam and Eve, and they hid, right? And so, and they clothe themselves; they're no longer exposed, if you will, to the Lord. As far as like, this is who I am, totally. Now I'm going to start hiding parts of my heart, like even hiding what I did. Adam, like, what happened? Oh, it's the woman you put here with me. She's the one who told me to eat the apple. Eve, what happened? Oh, it's the serpent you put here. Instead of saying. Lord, my fault. You know, I'm sorry. Like I shouldn't have done this, or mm-hmm. whatever it is. And so, like, it, there's a clothing, a hiding, and it and it continues out throughout salvation history, and because of the introduction <laughs> of sin, it continues on in our life. But once again, Jesus, being God, being sent from the Father, he goes to the garden free to, freely, <clears throat> and he goes to the garden once again to conquer sin and death, but even more so, in search of man's heart again. Right? Like, just as as the as God came down to speak to Adam and Eve, so does Jesus come down to the garden to dialogue with his Father. Um, just exposing everything who he is to him. And and right, the father perfectly knows the son and the son perfectly knows the father. But there is just this moment of trust to say that, okay, like this is it. Like this is who I am. And and there's nothing else that's gonna separate me from you. And can we have that same boldness and trust, that filial trust in our in our father that that he'll provide for us? Um, here in the catechism, two five two five six seven. Interesting number, 2567. Yet the living and true God tirelessly calls each person to that mysterious encounter known as prayer. Like he's not going to stop. Mm-hmm. Like he's not going to stop asking us to to be naked before him, like in a real way, just to to literally just just show me everything. You know, and 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 just to kind of like, as we spoke about before, like I want to go to those places that you want to cover up and hide. Like, no, like it's okay. I can be there with you. And I can show you my love and my compassion and whatever it is that you most desire. And so once again, just just realizing that this is the way in which the Father desires to be with us, but even more so that God has planned it from the from the very beginning. Um, just that we would be before him as we are and not holding anything back of ourselves for ourselves or hiding ourselves in any way, but just going to him com- with complete trust and with complete um, just surrender. And realizing too that because of sin, that process and that journey is difficult, but we don't have to be conquered by it because we have a God who has conquered that already. And it's in Jesus that we can freely walk and run towards the love of the Father. Just uh, just a kind of a, a bit of a refrain, just in my my own experience of prayer, but also working with some young guys in the last couple of months, like it'll be at the obviously be at the Last Supper where Jesus kind of proclaims this, like this is my body. But he also proclaims that from the can proclaim that from the cross, like this is my body, and then he can also proclaim that after the resurrection, that this is my body. You know, so a lot of guys struggling with chastity, struggling like a, a sense of self. Uh, there can be a spirit of self hatred, hatred for your body, hatred for your masculinity, hatred for your sexuality. Like we can get that all can get wrapped up uh, in our struggles and our addictions. Um, but just like the gift of like being with Jesus in prayer. And it begins with this, Jesus just saying that to me, to us, like, this is my body. You know, this is my body. This is the goodness. This is this is me now being naked on the cross without shame. This is my body for you. And this is, you know, the gift of my body given for you, you know? And then eventually like in our experience of just the, the gift of experiencing like Jesus is 
body without shame, his offering without shame, mm-hmm. we can begin to, to have that be our prayer. Like, Lord, I don't, I'm, a, I'm ashamed of my sin. I'm ashamed of my body. I'm ashamed of how I look. I'm ashamed of all the things that I don't <clears throat> like about myself. But like, could we eventually, because Jesus says it first and because he's naked, he makes, allows himself to be naked first in, 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 in taking on our shame and those things. Could we eventually allow that prayer to become our own? Yeah, Lord, like this is my body. Mm-hmm. And I want to show you it and I want to offer it to you, right? So there's just the beauty that the Lord does that. He goes back to the garden and once again proclaims, this is my body given for you without shame. And that I'm completely naked without shame before you. Crucified, beaten, full of sin. I, I, he takes on our affirmities, right? This is my body for you, right? And, and then eventually we get the freedom to do that as well. I'm not, I'm not going to be ashamed of my sin anymore. I'm not going to be ashamed of my body. I'm not going to hate my body. I'm not going to hate my sin. I'm not going to hate those things. But because Jesus says it first on the cross and he eventually receives the gift of that in his resurrection, that I can say, yeah, this is my body given for you, Lord. And some guys are afraid to pray that, like, because I don't, I, I, I don't, would never want to pray that. But eventually over time, just through like the gift of gentleness and Jesus's tenderness with them, they, they begin to make that prayer their own. Lord, here's my body. I give it to you. Which is, which is beautiful. Like a refrain that he wants to keep allowing us to find freedom. And I don't want to be ashamed of my body anymore. And I think that there's a, a real way you can say that, <clears throat> like that, uh, as Jesus remains with us, like in the Eucharist, that there is a way in which he remains, uh, like if you, I think you could say like poor and naked. Oh, like, exposed. Yeah, totally, yeah, totally. No, totally. Like, cause he's still in a certain sense, like he's veiled, but, but, but he's also, he's like totally vulnerable, totally dependent, mm-hmm. totally like, um, oh gosh, small, yeah. you know? And so there is a way in which he kind of remains, he comes to us still, if you will, like naked without shame, this is my body given for you mm-hmm. and invites us to do the same. Um, before you move on, I, I just I sure. finished. I just have one. I have two. I have two things. So go ahead. No. Well, I I was just before you move to the jock flute. I'm thing. not going to that yet. Good. Go for it, and then I'll speak after you. Okay. Um, I thought it was cool because Father PT's quote is in here. Um, hmm. Oh well. From twice, but this is what Father Toop says. So Father PT just quoted uh, the Catechism two five six seven a few days ago. Exact quote. A few days ago, I shared with you my favorite <laughs> quote from the Catechism, hmm. which happened to be Catechism. Two five six seven. Two five six seven. Look at you. There you go. Nice one. <laughs> Did you steal that from him? No. <laughs> um, and before that, oh, so um, this uh, this kind of like Jesus on the cross, um, totally kind of poor, naked, without shame, like, and and not clothing himself is, I think, um, right. This is the, and at least in. in the account i just read i forgot which one it was um the one we just read on palm sunday but there's the part where it's like well if you're like if you're the son of god if you are who you say you are like come down and essentially that's like a um that's like a quote like you like you look this is like like you look ridiculous up here like this is this is so below your dignity like this isn't just not in accord with who you say you are so if you are who you say you are like you prove it by clothing yourself you prove it by using the authority given to you and coming down you say essentially like you say yourself and and i think this is um but he like he remains totally poor he (coughs) remains totally surrendered um totally obedient and right and i think there's something of this where um there's there there's moments where we're going to follow jesus and we're going to follow him and we're going to be faithful to him and we're going to confess our faith in him and and that he is who he says he is and we're still going to find ourselves poor and broken. We're going to find difficult things happen. We're going to find, again, this unfulfilled desires. And perhaps somebody else will say to you, like, like, how do you still believe? Like, how do you still, like, how do you still believe? Like, how do you still remain? Like, say he is who he says he is with these things happening. Like, basically, like, take, or, and it's like, or do, like, take care of yourself. Like, get, like. Or it might happen in your like your own mind. There's there's gonna be like a temptation to okay like I'm I follow the Lord. I'm totally poor. I'm totally surrendered. I'm totally conformed to Christ crucified. Um, and the temptation is like, well, no, just stop. Like, come down. Like, take care of yourself. Like, okay, this hasn't worked out. Now it's time for you. Um, you've trusted Him. It looks like it's not working. Now you go and and take care of yourself. And I think this is where Jesus says like, no, like I'm gonna. Like the fullness of my dignity is to re- remain here, and I'm and I'm here without shame because I trust He is who He says He is, and and ultimately, right? Like the Father reveals His His fidelity and His faithfulness as Jesus uh, 
resurrects. So that's what I think of like, there's a, there's an example here, just like remaining in it and what a temptation might look like to just take ourselves down from the cross and, and clothe ourselves. Do you remember, sorry to interrupt no, you. Do you remember that quote by, I think it's Mary Caucus who says that it, uh, even if the nails weren't there, that the love that Jesus had for us would have kept him on the cross. I think that's always sweet. Like the reality is like, I could go down, even if they were like, yeah, come down and they took the nails out. He would still remain there because of his love for us. You know, yeah, is that Mary Caucus? They, I've read in Dean Keating, uh -huh. but okay. It's, it's the love that, that holds him fastens him to the cross rather. Oh, so I was just, again, just this, the agony in the garden, the passion, the cross, it's like, we're holding all that together here. And there's just so much to say. Um, but, we were talking about last episode, how Jesus comes and redeems us and saves us from the inside, right? And so you have in the garden, you have the, you have the, the just, it's an understatement to say that the, the, dis, the disobedient, the disobedience of Adam and, Adam and Eve um, break communion, right? And so the, now there's, there's this brokenness. It's, it's kind of, we just recently had it as, at least when we're recording this, we're reading through Genesis and, and it's, there's like a violence to when they, and when it, like they were kicked out of the garden, you're like, Ooh, like that's not supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. They're kicked out. And then Raphael, <laughs> we just discovered this <laughs> while they're in here. Raphael is standing, 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 standing <laughs> probably, car. probably uh fringy mystic stuff, but I, I've heard that. <laughs> That Raphael. I'm gonna bring it back together. Was the angel? So there's a violence to us there because that's not supposed to happen, right? And uh, so there's there's a there is a brokenness in communion, right? And and even a brokenness in in connection, right? And so like Adam and Eve were always supposed to feel in feel connected in communion, and so they were able to talk to God and live in a relationship like face to face. But now that's not the. the sin and disobedience broke that. And we feel that in our humanity. But now Jesus is, that's exactly why the agony in the garden and in this experience of, he's taking on all this, all this, like the brokenness of communion where he, like, he's like, Father, like, let this cup pass from me. Like it's like the suffering's too much, but not my, my will, but your will be done. Like Father, into your hands I commend my. Or, uh, um, excuse me, why, Father? Why have you forsaken me? Right? He feels like disconnected, like to the to such like a a radical degree. Like he is feels disconnected from the Father. Like so, we can like when we see Jesus go through this, we can be like, yeah, I felt disconnected too. Like I feel that. I feel sometimes like my prayers, just like I, I loft my prayers up into darkness. I, I feel like no one's listening. I feel alone, right? I feel disconnected, right? And, but Jesus, I just think it's beautiful. Like the agony to the cross, like Jesus takes on himself this, this brokenness and this, this, this disconnection, this, this brokenness of communion. He, and he says, no, like I'm going to place myself in that position and I'm going to feel in myself, in my person, this, 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 this brokenness. Mm -hmm. But what does he, he do? He, he refuses to, to grasp at anything else. Like the only way to heal that is to stay, even if he doesn't feel it with his father and, and to trust him. And that's how he heals it. So I just want to Beautiful. say that. I just want to say that because I think a lot of us can have an experience sometimes where we feel like, man, I, I feel like just far away. I feel like God doesn't hear my prayers. Like, Father, why have you abandoned me? Why is this happening? I, I, I'm like suffering in my body, like all these different things. And I feel like you don't listen. I feel like you're far away. I, you know, and, but Jesus even takes on all of that and he teaches us how to stay in trust. Yes. <clears throat> the catechism doesn't say it this way. I say it this way. I like that. We just recently had a gospel about that. You've heard that it's it was said, but I, I say, say I'm definitely not Jesus. But anyway, um, so talking about basically the no of Adam and Eve and the yes of Jesus, right? Like in between those two things, we discover uh, prayer, and uh, and it's beautiful, right? Because you think about <laughs> between the no of Adam and Eve. And the okay, yes me, I'll just read. Me, I'll just read the we quote. How about that? Prayer. I'm like, okay. okay. So in the Old Testament, this is two five six eight. In the Old Testament, the after <laughs> I was two five six seven. <laughs> yeah, you like that? And uh, if you're following along at home, two five six eight. In the Old Testament, the revelation of prayer comes between the revelation of prayer comes between the fall and the restoration of man. That is between God's sorrowful call to His first children. Where are you? What is this that you have done? And the response of God's only son 
on coming into the world, lo, I have come to do your will, O God. So, Reconnection. So once again, between the no and the yes, we discover. <laughs> I mean, that was not, well played. That's not verbatim. <laughs> I, didn't I just preface I'm it? I'm just saying, it's I didn't know. I was listening for the, the answer. This is I'm not like, the I was getting to bro, it. Bro, I'm with you. Keep you going. Me. Keep going. I didn't attack you, dude. I was just over here looking. I felt at, attacked. <laughs> I want he, a full apology he after. You. He no, and so, <laughs> but, um, but like, I think in our lives, right? And so, and it talks about at the end, um, prayer is bound up with human history. <laughs> for it's a relationship with God and his historical events. And so like in our own personal history, right, we can experience the no of Adam and Eve and then the yes of Jesus, like just in our prayer life, in our own personal life where we've said no many times, but we can also hopefully move along the spectrum of saying yes, just as Jesus did, where like he is the vulnerable one at the end of the day. Um, and just this reminded me when you said it, Father Andrews, about the Eucharist in particular, right? Um, unfortunately, I had this experience, which I, I, I really hate. I, I really hate this experience. Like as a priest, you're giving out communion and the person doesn't know what to do with it and they walk away with it sometimes. And, and mm -hmm. I was at this place where, <clears throat> anyway, I had to like stop communion, point to the person, tell them, like flag, flag them down, can you receive Jesus please? Um, because that's the proper thing to do. And um, anyway, but that's our God though. Like he, he comes in the Eucharist and he's just freely in our hands. And, and, and unfortunately, and this is, uh, anyway, it's just, it's bad that people do this as far as disrespect the blessed sacrament, but it's one of those things where He's vulnerable, like he's 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 just there, mm -hmm. you know. And so, um, but it's not taking away from his majesty and, and what he can do. Uh, it is, is obviously like once we receive him in faith and once we actually treat him with proper reference. There's there's beautiful things that happen. But but to say that he's the vulnerable one and that he desires that we basically transition, if you will, from that no to the yes, that we are able to just to give him everything to be brought vulnerable before him as he's vulnerable before us. And allowing us, if you will, just to to have access to his heart in this scandalous way, um, we're able to come before him anytime we want to, especially in the church, but even more so in prayer, that we can discover God is for us in this way, that he desires to hear us, that he once again comes and asks, where are you um, constantly and desires to speak with us. I End think of it, contribution. Thank you. That was beautiful. <clears throat> I think it's really cool. <coughs> gonna, it's Catechism 2568. It's kind of, and it's like heart wrenching too. Um, in the in the Old Testament, the revelation of prayer comes between the fall and the restoration of man. That is between God's sorrowful call to His first children. Where are you? And what is what, <laughs> what is that you have done? Where are you? That's like, yeah, that kind of gets you right there in the heart. In there, okay, that's two five six eight. Um where we'll be in Father Mike's Catechism of the Year in whenever, I don't know when that'll come out. No, no, August, I. August 3rd. That's, I don't really <laughs> I know. I don't know. Really know. Um, cool. Thank you, Father You're Pierre welcome. Toussaint. You're welcome, Father Mark Mary Haynes. Speaking of people with French names, hmm. Father, does that count as a French name? No, My it's name? Haitian name. Yeah, it's French roots. Okay. Yeah. Father Jacques Philippe. <laughs> Speaking of French, <laughs> French priest. No, I, I call him Jacques. <laughs> yeah. Jacques. Just straight up. I didn't mean to do Jack. that. The old Jacques. <laughs> I was like, ooh, Father Jacques. We very re much respect him. You going to lay this quote on us? Please. <clears throat> yes. So this is Father This is Father Jacques Philippe in Interior Freedom, page 86. And it's, it's, his talk, he's, it's what he's talking about in the, being in the present moment. This is your magical conclusion, right? This is this is the final proposal. This quote kind of summarizes it all. Is that we're I am not whoa, saying whoa, that. Whoa, whoa. Well, yeah, 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 I'm not saying <laughs> that. That was my experience of the notes here that, that we're going for it right here with this quote. It's literally, there's like a whole page of things. That, there's like four paragraphs afterwards. It's I do big, have something to share if you, anyway. It's a big quote. Do you have yeah. something to share? This is not, this is, I'm not like bringing this in for like a mic drop. No, no, no. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Angela, <laughs> thanks for setting up for that. <laughs> I'm going to let you do what you do and then I'll. He's just talking about living in, in the present. Um <laughs> Pretty awesome quote. <laughs> and this is, this is, I'll just read the whole thing. So st bear with me. To lock ourselves in the past would be a serious lack of trust in the infinite mercy and power of God. All right. So to lock yourself in the past, like we're just always looking at the things in, in the past that we've done wrong, like would be a, a, a serious lack of trust in the infinite <coughs> mercy and power of God. Beautiful. And this God who loves us and wants always to offer us a new chance to become holy despite the past. And so this is where like, so when the thought of how little progress we've made threatens to overwhelm us, we must make an act of faith and hope such as, and this is in quotes, thank you, my God, for all my past. 
I firmly believe that you can draw good out of everything I've lived through. I want to have no regrets and I resolve today to begin from zero with exactly the same trust as if all my past history were made up of nothing but faithfulness and holiness. Nothing could please God more than that. And so I think, again, this is this, um, this idea of being like naked without shame, uh, being, um, like to be totally seen, including with the fullness of our past and the fullness of, of our sinfulness and to, to bring this to Jesus on the cross, right. To bring it without shame and, and, um, and, and because of our confidence in his mercy, um, and because of our confidence in his, in his power, we can say, thank you, God, for all of my past. And I, I firmly believe that you can draw good out of everything I've lived through. And so like what, what I think is so provocative is like, like what he's talking about, including Father Jacques is here, like my own sinfulness. Like, I, like even these things that I have done, Lord, like I believe that you can bring good out of them. And, and I think that is like, that's really bold. And that's really, um, uh, I think there's just something there to like, to really like, lean into that that part of this is just to be totally again seen and, and vulnerable before the lord with everything and be able to say like i thank you lord i still thank you for 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 all of it um because of my, my confidence in who you are and your mercy and your ability to bring like he does at the cross to bring life out of death yeah um i just anyway i at the garden of the gethsemane i fell in love with this quote when praying through it Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Mm -hmm. Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. And so just, just taking a step back, knowing that what moment of this, this part of the story is like Jesus' life where he's faced with, yeah, basically soldiers are coming to arrest him and he's going to be crucified. And his first, his first expression of, of his first thoughts, if you will, are once again, as you mentioned, Father, said before, like Father, like all things are possible to you. And even to just praying about that, like, where did he get that from? You know, obviously his relationship, but remember our lady was told these same words by the angel, you know, um, like all things are possible for God. And so whenever we stand before the mystery of the unknown, mm. or even to like we're, we're pointing to in the past, like, can I trust and believe that all things are possible for God? Like that he's so good and so loving that he'll redeem those things that I've done that aren't the best. That once again, I wasn't the most proud of or... Um, that I really want to hide from. Um, but once again, as Jesus lays there in the ground and is just basically burying his heart, like, like Father, all things are possible to you. So if you want, you can make this pass by. But if not, like, I just want to do what you want. I just want to be where you are. And the same thing is too, right? Once again, we, we can't run from our past. Uh, we can't undo the things that we've done. Uh, but the Father, if we stay with him, can speak to us about it and allow us to see it in a different way. You know, and he can he can speak of his love for us and see in that moment when you were doing this thing, I was still loving you and I'm consistent in my love for you. And this is a part of the redemption that we can experience, especially from maybe those things. Once again, where we we hid from the Lord, where where are you? Ah, I was naked. So I hid like, no, no, no. I was looking for you in that moment. And, and here's how, you know, I can speak my love into this certain situation. And so, but if if we have this disposition of, of Father, like all things are possible for you, specifically as Jesus goes into the garden, preparing to suffer, um, I think just it opens up things as, as Father Jacques Philippe says, that we're able to, yeah, just have this bold claim, or at least to stake our claim boldly on the Lord that, okay, you can also redeem my past and even more so just sanctify my future so I can walk boldly in your name. When we live through Holy Week and, and we're, we're talking about, yeah, just... Again, we're not just talking about past events, right? We got to be really careful that Lent or Holy Week or the Triduum, like we're just recalling like mere memories. Like, oh, that was nice. These things happened to Jesus, and he. But like, remember the Church and the liturgy and and the in the scriptures. There, it's like a living reality. It's a living word. <laughs> and so, when we walk with Jesus the way of the cross this week, and we walk with Him. Um, in his passion and his death and his resurrection, we're 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 remembering this again. This this anamnesis, the word that you learned in seminary, PT. Um, there's, there's a holy remembrance. It's making present again the re the reality of Jesus's own life, death, and resurrection for us. Right. So when we go, when we're walking with Jesus through this, I'm I'm just struck by the reality that we 
we have an opportunity right now in with Jesus in the garden, with Jesus in the passion, with Jesus on the cross to surrender everything to him. Right, and so Father Mark Mary, like the quote, thank you, my God, for all my past. I firmly believe that you can draw good out of everything I've lived through. Right now, we can offer God the fullness of our lives. And that's the invitation. Can we offer God the fullness of our past, the fullness of our lives? And do we really believe that he can take it all, all on himself right now and, 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 and pour out his life, pour out his, again, the, the passion, the, the, the death, the resurrection for us right now? Mm-hmm. Like there can be an invitation to fullness right now. We can do this. You can do this with the grace of God, with Jesus. Can, can we allow him to invite us to this place of vulnerability that Jesus, I give it all right now everything I've been through, everything I've experienced from, from like, again, this, this place of the garden, from the first place of disobedience in my life to the last, like, I, I like, I just give it all to you. Like we actually believe that's the invitation right now. Um, Jesus is the Lord of life, but he's the Lord of history and he's the Lord of our history. And we actually believe this is what he wants to do. Right? Like, and that's why like, I'm struck by Father Jacques quote, like, we can, this is open to us right now. This is the invitation. Can we trust that Jesus wants to do this for us right now? And this, this, this Easter true one, that he wants to, he wants to inject his life, his death, his resurrection into ours. And can we just, can we be vulnerable and let that happen? Mm-hmm. It's it just time. It's time to, it's time to do that. It's time to, to have this Holy Week and true one be different mm-hmm. than the, than the past. And it's precisely in this place where it's time to give him, give him what you've been holding on to. Mm-hmm. It's time to give him the shame. It's time to give him the memories. It's time to give him the stuff that you haven't told anybody about. And that's been such a burden. And it, yeah, just time. And this is zero. Like this, this true to him and the, the, the gift of the resurrection of Jesus it becomes when, when he talks about starting over it from zero, starting over from the, the new foundation, the new baseline of, of the one who came to set us free, of the one who came to offer our, our disobedience back to the father and his radical obedience, right? And so it's just time. I mean, we were talking about in between episodes, like it would be wonderful if like this was the year, like this, this was, this was the year that, that we, me personally, but everyone listening would, would, would give Jesus this space and say, okay, Jesus, I'm going to enter this week with you. And I'm going to, I'm going to be completely exposed to you, holding nothing back for myself. And I'm going to show you everything. I'm going to allow you to walk me through my life. I'm going to tell you my story again. I'm going to start from the beginning and tell you my story. Okay, Lord, here's everything. Like it's time and let's do it. And we can do it because we know that this is God's will for us. When we want to talk about God's will, this is his will for us. This is the whole point of this week that we were able to be naked without shame like Jesus and and give the father everything and let us begin again. I, um, this is a part of like the daily examine as far as like having a a portion of Thanksgiving, like going back through your day and just thanking God for things. And, um, I don't know. Anyway, I was on a retreat and my retreat director, she invited me just to go through my whole life, both good and bad, just to thank God for everything, but not analyze it, but just to this situation as much as I can remember and not like go through details, but just to, okay, this situation. Thank you, Lord. This situation, thank you, Lord. And as you do that, like you just you just realize, first of all, that the providence of God and how He's taking mm-hmm. care of you. Like when just in that isolated situation, like it was probably like a difficult, dark time. But then as you start to like, oh, and then thank you, Lord, for that. And then you realize that the darker moments are f- a lot shorter or smaller than the ones where you have the Thanksgiving for like the the joyful moments. But once again, I think just sometimes, just maybe even practically going through um yeah, just your life and thanking him for everything, you know, can just hopefully just create this heart of of gratitude, but even more so just realizing that he's been in your past, he desires to be there, but also too, that this is a place for redemption. And it's not like isolated and like you live out this shameful thing that happened to your past. But, but once again, Father Andrew, just as you're saying, like this is a chance for renewal, a chance that things are different this, this particular um, Holy Week, but even more so just to invite him there and just to be thankful, just, okay, I didn't see how you were there, but I know you're there. And so thank you. Mm. Amen. Amen. I have nothing else to add. It's great. So the next podcast will be Easter week. I mean, so it's just like, so we're happy Easter. I mean, we're mm-hmm. this Easter happens between now and the next time. Yeah, 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 yeah. We talk. That's, just, mm-hmm. I'm just noting that. Happy Easter, everybody. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, it's like, it's funny, like when people talk about the chosen, like 
they don't want to like reveal what's like I, I think we all know how the story goes <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway. Yeah. anyway i know what they're talking about but let's pray father <laughs> uh, jesus we thank you for uh, going before us for leading the way and um for teaching us what it means to surrender to be to- <coughs> totally and completely reliant dependent on the lord we thank you for taking within and upon yourself all of our human experience, including the consequences of sin and suffering. We thank you for the gift of our baptism so that you now live your life within us. We pray, Lord, for this grace, this holy week to stand before these mysteries, to celebrate them well, and to um, to be just totally vulnerable and poor and and, <coughs> and transparent and vulnerable for before them, to be naked without shame, and to receive the fullness of the gift and to be clothed by these mysteries and the gift of your uh, your mercy and your providence, your fatherhood, and uh, ultimately the glory of the resurrection. And um, we'll pray these words of Father Philippe to conclude. Thank you, my God, for all my past. Thank you, my God, for all my past. I firmly believe that you can draw good out of everything I have lived through. I want to have no regrets and a resolve today to begin from zero with exactly the same trust as if all my past history we're made up of nothing but faithfulness and holiness. And we make this prayer in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. We'll, we'll see you on the other side of the tomb. Happy Easter, everybody. It's not Easter yet. I mean, happy Holy Week. Happy Holy Week. <laughs> <laughs> Unless saying, you're yeah. listening to this after Easter Sunday, then happy Easter. Fair enough. Have a blessed day, everyone. Peace, y'all. Bye. Poco a poco vamos a llegar Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are We make our way, hey, hey Little by little we learn a little more each day That God is love, that life is short That all will be well